Taking palliative care to the poor. Dr. John Weru from the Nairobi Hospice is visiting Esther, who's now confined to her home. Her advanced breast cancer has spread to her lungs. Esther's son, Sammy, gives her oral morphine for the pain. The dosage will now need to be increased. Nairobi Hospice has been, quite literally, a lifeline for Esther and her family. While Sammy is caring for her, he can't work as a casual labourer, which means they have even less to live on. The eight types of drugs that Esther is on will cost a fortune if they are to be bought from a chemist or if they are to be charged to a patient. Esther didn't tell her children how ill she was until she felt they were old enough to understand. Now she's dependent on them. Tell me the kind of things that you have to do for her. I was the one washing the breast when it was swollen. Still, I do massage her, her right hand. I cook. I wash the house. I have accepted she can't. And I'm here to help. There are still too many people in Kenya who do not get this kind of help in coping with the symptoms of advanced illnesses. One of the key issues for the Kenya Hospice and Palliative Care Association is stepping up the supply of morphine and also overcoming the suspicions some medical professionals have about prescribing it. Dr. Zippy Ali is the association's national coordinator. Our colleagues are the biggest challenge, especially when it comes to things like pain management. Patients are suffering in pain, but nobody's treating their pain. Very few patients get uh, their pain treated. Very few centers uh, actually give morphine or, or weak, weak opioids to patients who have got pain. And it's basically the clinicians who are to blame. Nakuru Hospital in the Rift Valley is one of a number of government hospitals in Kenya that have embraced palliative care. It seconded a clinical officer and two nurses to help develop palliative care services for inpatients. Mary Wambui is a 37-year-old cancer patient who's been admitted with a severely infected breast wound. The ward nurse is given help in managing her pain and symptoms. Among those waiting to be seen by nurse Erica Misi at the Coast Hospice in Mombasa is 12-year-old Jackson. He was diagnosed with a childhood cancer known as Burkitt's lymphoma and was given chemotherapy. What he still needs and receives here is psychological support. It often fails to get the attention it should. What was it like for you then when you were so ill? Later in the day, Eric and Mildred Amondi, the hospice social worker, pay a home visit. In this case, the patient has no home of her own. The small room has been lent to Winnie, who's suffering from Carposi's sarcoma, and her husband, Henry. They couldn't afford any chemotherapy. Henry has no job <coughs> at present. Mm. Okay. We have learned uh, quite a number of lessons to recognize that palliative care is not about brick and mortar. Palliative care can be provided in any simple setting, even in a patient's home, a patient lying on a floor can benefit from morphine. Palliative care is constantly pushing out to new frontiers in Kenya, here to the nomadic communities on the Laikipia Plains, where traveling time between patients can run into hours. Mm. 
The principle on which palliative care took root in Kenya is that cure is rare, but comfort is always there. And palliative care can improve the quality of life, even for those who find that severe illness makes the pressure of poverty unbearable.